Yes, that was scrap metal. I actually traded an old uh, scrap uh, Volkswagen, uh, or part of an old scrap Volkswagen, pound for pound. For and this is the back of the fireplace. I, I, He's a top-notch woodworker. Like I told you, you know, with, with Harvey made that cherry table. Mm -hmm. You know, but I do the metal work, like this table and the, and the glass work. Mm. My dad actually made this table. It's one of the few artifacts I have from my dad, who died when I was 11. So it's a oh, that's of my cool. treasure. Yeah, that's quite an heirloom. Yeah, actually. Uh, now your hot water tank is above the fireplace. The the solar and wood heated tank is above the fireplace. It's an 85 gallon, 16 gauge, non-ferrous stainless tank, and it's heated indirectly by the, the loop I described from the panel on the roof that uh, runs uh, non-toxic antifreeze down through it. Right now the sun is shining, it's heating that antifreeze, and it's going through a 50 foot coil. It's in the lower uh, half of that tank, and it's uh, uh, heating the water that's in the tank, which anytime we turn on a tap, that the hottest water from the top of that tank will go in and feed into my electric water heater, which is back in the pantry. And the thermostat and electric water heater is set at 120 degrees. I got a, therm a thermostat, a thermometer rather, on the uh, incoming line. So uh, I open a hot water tap and I can see what the water temperature is coming out of the solar water heater. And I can guarantee you it's above 120 degrees, so the electric water heater isn't even cutting in. And that's also uh, heated when the wood is, uh, when we've got a wood fire going, it's heated directly by the, uh, the fire through the coil because you don't need uh, antifreeze in here. There's no danger of it freezing. So it's just the actual water going through the coil on the stack here. This is an attached solar greenhouse. Jammed with plants. <laughs> smells green. Yeah, but that's one of the nice things about it. They're, they're making oxygen, which we need, and, and they need our carbon dioxide. So especially in the wintertime when the sun is shining, it's just a wonderful place to be. It's a little warm right now, but it's a wonderful place to be. You just feel invigorated by the oxygen, and, and we're helping the plants, and it's a wonderful thing to come out here. You ever come out here when there's snow on the ground and pick uh, ripe tomatoes off the vine? It, it's, it's a How great thing. How fun is that? I think it's a lot of fun. But the idea is it's south facing, a whole lot of glazing, and I built this very inexpensively. But the black barrels are filled with uh, water for thermal mass, and the sun shines on them and warms them up, and that holds the heat, so we don't need to heat this at night. I, like I said, we had a five degree uh, morning this, this uh, year in February, and uh, we didn't heat this, and it got down to, it still reads it, it got down to 40 degrees in here, which is good, good enough for the plants. You wouldn't want to uh, experience that in your living space, but uh, with all the glazing, it loses heat uh, fairly well. I've double glazed all this, but originally built it single glazed for under three hundred dollars. And uh, we can we have it set up so I've got a little fan and a thermostat here, so that if we're not home and it's winter time and uh, the sun's going to be shining. We can, uh, it'll cut on automatically. I've got it set at about 85 degrees, so when it gets warm enough in here, it'll blow the warm air into the house to help heat the house. Otherwise, if we're home and we want the heat, we just open that door. Mm -hmm. This is my first uh, solar water heater on the house. This is a, called a batch heater, and it's just a black tank that's in the sun and inside an insulated enclosure, the greenhouse in this case. And with the sun shining on it, and uh, uh, the water sitting in it, it gets uh, pretty warm. We used to have it feeding the electric water heater, but now that I've got the uh, the panel on the roof, uh, this just feeds out to here and we use that to work in the greenhouse or uh, wash the dogs with or something, but uh, they're not as efficient as the flat plate uh, that's on the roof. Do you have venting in here as well? Well, the, uh, these, these panels I made, these are uh, just styrofoam panels. I use the pink board, which is the extruded uh, polystyrene. It's a lot tougher than the, than the uh, bead board. And uh, I just uh, covered them with, uh, I believe it's called melamine. It's just a thin, uh, watertight uh, covering. And these are inserts that just fit into the, the uh, recesses here so uh, I've got a screens there that I can open up like a warm day like today we just take these out 
during the summer I'll put these away in the shed and we've got several of them all around here so that I don't need to run a fan to keep it uh, decent in here mm. and uh, when we get another few weeks or so I'll put a 60% shade cloth on the roof on the outside and that will cut down a lot on the, the overheating that uh, will happen in here. So you just make sure you have ventilation on both ends? So ventilation you can get... on both ends and that's where the breeze usually comes you know out of the west so hmm. that helps. I just didn't want to be running a fan. Right. I'll show you one more solar water heater. Don't worry about that. Now this is more of a demonstration. You can see I, I like this tree too much to cut it, but it, it is obviously shading this at, at this time of day. Uh, this is just my uh, stained glass studio and my uh, mechanic and wood shop and I wanted some hot water for this, mostly for the stained glass to wash the flux off the glass after it's resoldering and uh, I was actually paid to remove two of these panels from a, a person's house where they had their water system, uh, water, solar water heater uh, not work properly and they couldn't get anyone to, to fix it so they paid me to remove it uh, and I did this as a demonstration to show people how inexpensively you can get into solar because this collector is down low I've got the uh, heat exchanger tank above it I don't need a pump and photovoltaic panel like is on that uh, system because that collector is above the heat exchanger uh, this one as soon as the Sun strikes this panel and it does it's just not right now <laughs> it'll warm the antifreeze solution that's in here and the antifreeze solution will then rise up this pipe and go to uh, a tank that's well insulated up here and uh, I have wrapped uh, 30 feet of soft copper tubing around the outside of that tank so the warm uh, antifreeze will rise up to that coil and uh, lose its heat to the water that's in the tank and uh, then as it cools it comes back down this loop and uh, driven by gravity and sunlight will, as long as the sun is shining, it will just continue to cycle and move heat up to that well insulated tank. Uh, it's called the gravity system, it's very inexpensive, it's connected with uh, automotive heater hose and um, if you don't count, we, we were going to put it in a water heater anyway, so if you don't count the cost of the electric water heater, I don't think I've got $75 in the whole system. Hmm.